morning is our vocational classes that are offered in these three rooms. Um, we have three different main classes which are going on in this area. There's the accounting computing, secretarial clerical, and data processing. In the accounting computing area, we learn how business handles money. They are just like your pocketbook at home. They have money coming in, and they have money going out. And it's up to you, the bookkeeper, to write down what, why you have it or why you're spending it. And then for the accountant, sometimes they have to decide, well, are we spending too much on the light bill? Uh, why are we spending more in this department than we are that department? So these are some of the things that go on in accounting. In the secretarial clerical area, uh, people work in offices, and this doesn't necessarily mean that it's for women only. This is for men, because with computers, we're changing to the point that many of the bosses uh, are doing their own clerical work, too. That's because of the computers. It's easier for them to type it on the computer than it is to tell their secretary anymore. So this is ch title is going to be changing. Uh, one of the things that they do is a lot of letter writing, answering telephone, uh, greeting people who come into the company, uh, various things that go on in an office. Over here in the data processing area, they primarily use computers. They will learn how to do word processing, how to do uh, spreadsheets where they can put figures into the computer and add them horizontally, vertically, and the computer just figures totals like that. Uh, they will learn how to do filing, database, um, and a little bit about programming over here. Now, all three of these classes have to do with office work. One of the things that we're doing is changing it so that we will have one course out of it. Um, let me show you what we're talking about when we say we are changing it. Um, some of the things that all three of those classes have are communications, we need to talk about dress and grooming, office etiquette, work organization, employability activities. Uh, employability means how to make out an application blank, how to get a job, how to go for an interview. One of the things that we are doing in order to help you with some of this is we're changing our class to what we call a cluster class. We're taking those three separate classes and putting them together into one class. The students will sign up for the class and let's say that you are interested in, right now you think you want to be an accountant, but you're not that sure of what it's all about. So after you get in there, you say to Mrs. Vandelar, gee, Mrs. Vandelar, I'm not sure. I, I don't know if I really like that class. I think I'd like to move out of the accounting and into data processing. Well, with this class, you can retain those skills that are needed and required by the state, needed in the office and required by the State Department, you don't lose credit for that and you don't have to duplicate it like we do here. So hopefully that will be a help to you. Another thing that can happen, we can have a student come in and boy, they're just a whiz at data processing. They finish it, they get all their requirements completed in here, and they say, Mrs. Vandler, I'd like to also study a little bit about clerical. So in this class, we can let you do that all one right in a sequence without having to take it at a separate time, take up four hours of your day. We can work out a little bit with you what you want to do as a career and specialize and fit you into what you want. Now you're seeing course titles here, but the job titles are numerous that go with this. Uh, I, I don't have enough time to start listing them even. Another thing that we're trying to do is we would like people to become acquainted with the, um, shall I say, terminology that 
is required in business. Business Information Technology is the name of the course that we came up with, and of course acronyms are in fashion today, and the word BIT came right out of that, Business Information Technology. Another thing we're trying to do for the student is called flex scheduling. In other words, make it a little more flexible. Um, if you can't take the class this hour and this hour, maybe you could take it second and third. If you can't take it these hours, maybe you can take it third and fourth. Some of the students want to take band and it's only offered fourth hour. All right, then you can come in second and third. These are some of the things that we're trying to do at the high school in the vocational area to help you. Now I'd like to take a little time and say that I thank you very much for coming in this morning and I hope that that explains just a tiny bit what we're doing here. I'm going to take time now and take you on a little tour and a close-up of some of the machines. So Alright, let's 
begin. <laughs> and as usual, I like to begin at the very beginning. So, if all of you have your names in the book, let's start with page one. Who am I? There are various things you have to know before you even try to get into the job market about yourself and about what's required of you, okay? And let's see how good a readers we are. Let's start with Christy. Why don't you read the first little blurb? <coughs> first step in looking for a job is to determine your skills, abilities, and talents. What information should you have about your background and past experiences? What information will you have will you or an employer need that might be required by law? Below is a list of the information that you should have when you start your job search. Your social security card. You must have a social security number before you can start to work. Okay, let's stop right here. What do you guys know about the social security card? First of all, before you do that, how many of you do not have one? Or do not know what we have. All of you know how to get. How many of you already know what your social security is? Very good. <coughs> what happens if you lose your social security card? You have to apply for a new one. Where would you apply for the new one? And where is that? West Main. It's on West Main. Specifically, where in West Main? The old elk club. Any of the old elk club. Very good body. Um, most likely, the majority of you in this room will have to, most definitely, have to apply for a new social security card at one point in time. Why would I say that? For women when you get married. Why would it change? Your name change. Okay, if you're not going to change your name, you wouldn't have to. But if your name changes, or guys, or females, you know, if they decide you can't stand your name and you go to court to get your name changed, you also would have to apply for a new social security card. <coughs> your number does not change, though. Your number will always stay the same. Okay, but you will get a new social security card. Alright? What about that social security card? It says you'll need it before you can start work. What do you know about the background of the social security card? Yeah. It's your legal ID. Okay. So they are supposed to use this for all credit information. They're supposed to use this for anything that has to do with the financial money aspects. They will always ask for your social security number. Because right. it's the one ID no one else will ever carry it. And because it's your legal <coughs> ID, they used to use this as your ID for when you apply for a job. Now, how come they're not doing this anymore? They are not to ever ask you for your Social Security number as your ID when you apply for a job. Some businesses still do. But why are they not supposed to ask you? you know why? Has anyone ever been asked for the Social Security card as an ID? Okay, you have to give your number at one point in time once you're already hired, but you're not supposed to use it as an ID tool to be hired. Some people still do. And you don't know it, and a lot of you don't know the reason why, because where we're located geographically. So if we lived in Texas or Florida or Southern California, all of you would know the reason why you have to have a legal ID, which is not so scary. You want to know now? Maybe you can. Yeah. Um, the in Mexico, they come off and the illegal alien. Right. It was very, very easy for them to get paid. Very easy. 